Up next is DroneLink. DroneLink also operates on a templatized format, kind of like Drone Deploy. DroneLink is definitely has more bells and whistles as we'll see as we get through this demonstration, but uh, it also has some enhanced flexibility that some of the other platforms just don't have. So let's dive in. You see when you come up, um, it enters you into a repository and that repository gives you a couple different options to create a new plan from scratch. In this case, we're gonna use a template because that'll make it just a little bit easier to walk through this. And we're gonna use the map. So when I click on map, it pulls up the area where I am and it asks for to select a takeoff location for the new plan. All right, easy enough. Let's go ahead and do it right on the sidewalk. And what it does is it creates a new comp a new map component. And that new map component allows us to now size. We can turn layers on and off by using this these uh, stylized brackets. We can turn some component layers off. In this case, let me go ahead and turn off the uh, let me turn off the flight plan. That'll make it easier to sort of move things around. So I'm going to zoom out. And what I can do here is I can take the corners, I can start with A and sort of put the plan where I want it. Move in the points, like so. Just like that. So that's nice. From here, I can see that it already gives me sort of an overall view of the map. If I click into this component, this map component, it'll give me uh, everything that I need to change, right? I can change the camera. Right now it's on a Phantom 4 Pro. I have lots of options for the camera. Change it to a Mavic 2 Pro. And it'll automatically change that field of view so we can know um, essentially what the camera's gonna be looking at for overlap and side lap uh, for completion of the mission. So in this case, it's at the altitude. I like that I can type in the altitude. Let's just change it to 250. That is nice. I can change it from a normal lawnmower pattern to a crosshatch grid. Let's leave it as normal. Set the overlap, frontal and side. Uh, I like, as you probably guessed by now, 75, 75. I can set the speed. If I didn't want to quite go that fast, I can go 15 miles per hour, change the camera angle pitch to hold. If you're doing an oblique mission, you can put it at a slightly shallower angle or a completely nadir mission at negative 90 degrees. Capture mode is photo. It can also do videos. Um, and I can set the minimum capture interval. Just kind of leave that alone. Um, I can add a drone heading. And that's what I can do here, which is, which is very handy. So I hit done. Great. Now, another interesting thing that you can do with this is I can add in additional components. Now, this is sort of a little bit extra, but if I add a new component, it gives me a lot of choices. Let's say I wanted to now fly an orbit. I want to fly an orbit, set the location for an orbit. Let's say I want to do an orbit over here on this side of the field. It'll put an orbit in. I can change the altitude. Let's say I want to descend and do a 200 foot orbit with a 100 foot radius clockwise and say done. It will put that orbit here. Now remember, I turned off the flight path. So if I turn the flight path back on, now I can see the flight path and I can see the, the orbit as well. So I can also change, this is a little bit harder to do without a larger screen, so bear with me. I can also rotate the flight plan, like I can rotate the entire mission like so. Is going to make it larger and smaller directly in here. Like I said, it's not the most intuitive um, or responsive, at least not on a smaller screen. If you're planning it on a laptop or you're planning it on a tablet, it's a little bit easier, but I, I would like a little bit different buttonology. Some of the buttons are just a little too close together for my liking, but then that's it. And at that point, you can save this mission. Now it is a planned mission. It's ready to fly. Um, and you can go right into your DJI Go 4 app and or DJI Fly app and fly the mission. Uh, with this open, it'll automatically send the mission information over to it and you can then fly the mission. So overall, drone link, it's handy. It's not quite as flow, it doesn't have quite as good of a flow as, as I would like. It does have the extra to add additional mission components to it and have that fine resolution sort of control on the overall mission. That's very nice. Um, but I would have liked to see just a little bit more as far as drone link. And like I said, I'm just hitting the basics. There's probably more diving deeper into some of the more advanced functionality, but we're just covering the basics here. So that's drone link. Let's see what's next.